When things happen that we don't like or we wouldn't choose, automatically our bodies resist it. We go into resistance mode. But this makes our lives so much harder and so much more of a struggle. But how can we possibly accept the things that we see as so unacceptable? In today's video, I'm going to be educating you on what it really means to accept things, why it is so hard to accept these things, and then really to free yourself the practical tips and how to move it forward. I'm Candace Bester from Grit. So what is acceptance? For me, acceptance is coming to terms with what has happened. Admitting that it was painful, offering yourself compassion, and knowing that it was not your fault. Many of us blame ourselves for these things that have happened in our lives. Maybe we were told it was our fault, we believed it, and we've taken it on. But I'm here to tell you that it was not your fault. And that when things are happening around you that are not in your control, it is not your fault. And the sooner that you see this, and the sooner that you stop beating yourself up about the things that you cannot control, the better for you. So acceptance is really about coming to terms with what has happened. So why do we want to accept the things that we cannot change? Why do we want to accept the things that have happened that hurt so badly? Well, we want to set ourselves free. We don't want to be held captive to this absolute destruction in our minds and in our bodies. This wishing that things would be different. This wishing that this hadn't happened. And so we want to feel unstuck. We, when you are living in this space, you are stuck. Everything is harder. And so you want to learn how to do this to set yourself free. The next thing is to see what acceptance is not and to really understand what it is not because there are many misconceptions out there. So it is not condoning bad behavior. It is not saying what happened was okay. It's not saying I'm going to forget about it. I'm going to just pretend it didn't happen and that's impossible. So that is not what it is. It's not giving people a get out of jail free card and saying to them, whatever you did was okay. So that is not what acceptance is. And when you know this, you can now also start to understand why it is so damn hard to accept these things. It really is hard. It's hard because we think that if we forgive people, if we accept, them, if we accept things and if we move on, that we're gonna be letting people get away with things. We're gonna be giving them a get out of jail free card. It is hard because subconsciously we are thinking that if we, I don't know, hold on to it, if we, if we just absolutely just detest what happened, then we're going to be punishing that person or we're going to be making them feel how we felt. And I just want you to know this is the definition of insanity. It's like saying, okay, so my brother teased me all my life, so now I'm going to tease him back so that he can feel how I felt. Well, I can tell you now, my brother wouldn't give a rat's ass if I did tease him because he's a different person with a different perception. And that kind of stuff doesn't get to him like it got to me. And you see, this comes from our upbringing. As children, we've been taught and we teach our children that just do it back to them. If they hit them, just hit them back. If they mean, just be mean back. And so now this has become our programming. So we think that we're punishing people by holding on to this resentment. It's also our blueprint. So when you have been doing something for a lifetime and it has become your natural behavior, it's your blueprint. It's all you've ever known and it's hidden from your, consci your conscious mind. And that's also why it is absolutely so hard to get rid of it. So how do you step through this? How do you get to the other side? Well, there's a couple of things. So firstly, I want to just suggest that if, you're, if what you're speaking about and what you're thinking about while you're listening to this um, video is really deep, deep stuff, then I suggest that you get support before you even start this journey. And support can come in so many ways. 
You know, for me, I could never afford therapy, but there are support groups out there. There are so many support groups of people that have been through the same things that are further down the journey that you are. And so if you are looking for support groups, please reach out to us. I have so many that I can recommend to you. So before you start, decide how heavy and how deep you need to go on this acceptance process. And then get a support group. Get in touch with people who are further down the road. They are going to be able to tell you what to avoid, how to to go through this journey so that you really can come out the other side and be successful. The next thing that you need to do is you need to stop hiding it. You need to start to speak about it. You know, there is so much destruction that happens when we sit in a space of shame and we hide things and we don't even want to talk about it. And then something magical happens when we do start to talk about it. People are like, wow, I can't believe how vulnerable you were. But mostly people can relate. They can relate and they'll say things like, oh, I'm so glad you shared that. You know, I have a very similar thing that happened to me. When you speak about it, that is such a key element to accepting what happened because now there's no secret here. There's nothing you have to hide. So much of this, again, is conditioned. It's family secrets that we've been taught to, to keep. We've been told that's not really what happened. This is how it happened. But you know the truth. You know your reality. And when you start to speak your truth, it is the most liberating feeling in the whole wide world. And if other people don't like it, just remind yourself, you're not doing this for other people. You're doing this for you. The next thing that I want you to do is to keep your eye on the prize. And what I mean by that is, while you're going through this journey, just know that it's not going to last forever. See yourself on the other end, feeling calmer, rejuvenated, in your own skin, like in your own skin, knowing who you are, and thriving in every single area of your life. Because I can almost put money on this. That whatever you're struggling with in your life is going to get easier when you learn to move past these injustices and unacceptable things. The next thing I suggest is that you meditate on this. In other words, create spaces where you calm your mind, where you visualize yourself recovered, where you see a different you, the future you, not the present or the past you. And then if you do believe in a higher power, I highly recommend that whatever that is, that you just pray. Just pray. Just speak it out. The more that I do this, the more I realize that my prayers are getting answered quicker and more. It's just so clear to me how, how this is, is happening. To, it's just being revealed in front of my, in front of my eyes. And when you go through these steps, then you are going to be able to really just see that there are so many blessings in what happened. And what has helped me as well is to, to see my past as the very thing that made me who I am today. And for a very long time, I hated who I was. There were things I detested about myself that I wanted to change and I tried so hard to change. But I've actually realized that those two are beautiful qualities. And I'll give you an example. Like, I've always called myself a people pleaser and a caretaker. But actually, there's a lot of good in that too. There's a lot of good in caretaking and it's a part of who I am. And if anything else, this process has brought me home. It has brought me into my skin. The, the true authentic me. And that feeling, oh my gosh, it is indescribable. It's a feeling of completeness, of wholeness, like nothing is missing. It's a whole new world. So once you have gone through these steps or when you're aware of going through these steps and you found a support group and you're working through this and you're finding a way to accept it, there's a couple of tips that I want you to keep in mind. Number one, you're not doing this for anybody else but yourself. You are freeing yourself you're not doing this to change somebody else. You're doing this to change you. 
because you know that it's going to be a whole new world on the other side. Be patient and compassionate with yourself in the process. You know, so often through this healing process of mine, the worst and the hardest parts have been when I have wanted to move forward quicker than I was, have been impatient with where I was in my journey, and when I have not shown myself the love and the compassion that I so badly needed to go through very tough stuff. I really think that this is going to help you to heal and accept and really free yourself from the things that have gone on in your past. But just as an added bonus, I want to speak about the things that are currently happening. Those little things that happen every single day that trigger you, that shift your mood, and that absolutely keep you stuck. The taxi driver that cuts in front of you, the traffic, the being late for work, the colleague who is impatient or doesn't show up, the meeting that is running late, and you need the overwhelm. All these things that come to you every single day that are not in your control, I have a gift for you today, and this is really an added bonus. A three-step process of really just being able to shift in the moment, because if you don't, you are going to, if you actually think about it, how this gets taken into the rest of your day and negatively impacts the rest of your day. Never mind the rest of your day, the rest of your week, the rest of your month. And it really is because we have a perception of how things should be. We have an idea of what the ideal looks like, how people should be, how events should be, and how things should be panning out. And when it doesn't match what we want, we are triggered, we fight it, we live in resistance, and we are unhappy. So when you notice that you are unhappy for some reason, you're going to literally feel it, feel it in your body. You're going to feel tense or anxious or angry. You're going to, your behavior is going to change and you're going to know that you've been triggered. We all know when we've been triggered. You're going to step into this three-step process. So the first step is you've got to notice you've been triggered. If you don't notice it, you're going to keep doing the same old, same old. Step two is you have to stop and take a deep breath. And I mean stop and take a deep breath. And sometimes it's two breaths or three breaths. I've had to do it 10 breaths. But you breathe until you feel a shift in your body. If you don't feel that shift, if you go on to step three, you're not going to make the right choice. So shift your internal state by noticing and then breathing. And when you have shifted and you feel different, any kind of a shift, you're calmer, your brain is more you're more focused, whatever that looks like. You're going to go on to step three, which is really make a clear choice. And you have lots of options when you get to the make the clear choice. For me, the number one thing with those little things that I spoke about, the taxi driver and, 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 those things I choose to let go right there and then. How do I let it go? I just do. How do I just? I just make a decision. Okay. <sighs> I'm going to let that go because there's not a chance in hell that I'm going to let that taxi driver influence the rest of my day. Ta-da! That's how it works. So the little things that irritate you, let it go after you've noticed it and breathed. The other things that you could choose to do is have a clear conversation with the person who's constantly doing the same thing but you've never spoken up about it. Another thing that you could choose to do is actually not do anything. Did you know that's a choice? That was mind blowing for me. Sometimes just leaving it and letting time pass before you decide what to do is the best thing that you can do. Because in that space, you are going to be much clearer on the decision that you're going to make. And you know, sometimes when two or three days have passed, you're going to be like, oh, I can't even believe I was going to make such a scene out of that. It's already gone. Like I've already moved on. And another choice that you can make is just to give yourself, I say this in every single video, give yourself compassion for the moment that you're going through, which is hard. I've never used to be able to do this. And the more that I do this, the better it is for me. 
I really hope that that three-step process is something that you can implement into your life. And I want to end this video by saying, it is no good listening and not doing. It's the doing and the implementing of the work that is going to move you forward in your life. And you need to believe that you have what it takes. And I know that you have what it takes. I can't wait to see you in our next video.